If you're in your 20s and seeking direction, then this video is for you. Your 20s can be the most transformative years of your life as you transition from youthhood to adulthood. Having the right systems in place and a solid plan in these transformative years can be the difference between success and financial freedom or continuing to stay in the rat race like everybody else. Let's go. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Evan and if you're new here, I'm a real estate agent and mortgage broker. So today we're going to be talking about investing specifically for your 20s. So I don't know about you, but I want to reach financial freedom as soon as possible. And if you're watching this video, chances are you do too. Success, like anything good, takes time and practice. So starting as soon as possible puts you in a very good position to succeed long term. Here are seven different ways to get ahead of the curve and start your journey off right. Starting off avoiding debt, specifically student debt. Now I understand getting an education is very important, but choosing the school you go to to get that education, I argue, is even more important. As college continues to increase in price, you really need to consider if it's worth going to that private school, or if it makes more sense to go to that state school or that community college. You also need to consider if your job actually needs college. Trade jobs like plumbing and electricians, they go to trade schools, but they don't need to go to college and it's significantly cheaper. Furthermore, you have to understand that the average American student leaves college with tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. That's a lot of money to start your life off with owing to someone else. Another thing to consider is getting a job as soon as possible. Now, I'm not talking right after college. I'm talking as soon as you can. Middle school, high school, as soon as possible. Regardless of what your job does, it gives you fantastic skills. We're talking leadership, uh, communication, uh, cooperation, learning how to work as a team, uh, learning how to take orders, how to use a register, uh, anything and everything. Even if it doesn't apply to the job that you eventually do later in life, it adds to your resume and it shows people that you're hungry and you're willing to do what it takes to succeed. Another thing that people don't consider until it's a little bit too late is building your credit as soon as possible. Now, I was in a very good position where my mom and dad put me on their credit card when I was in high school or college. I don't remember specifically, but there are programs with specific banks where your parents can give you a credit card to latch onto and it slowly builds your credit. So eventually when you enter the workforce or when you're 21 or 22 or whatever, you already have a credit that's solid and that's ready to go and so instead of having to start then. Building credit as soon as possible is crucial because there's so many things in life that involve credit. Uh, getting a loan, uh, getting an apartment, um, making payoffs, getting a car, like all of these things are taken in consideration with a credit card. Another thing to consider is living below your means, specifically budgeting, knowing how much you spend each month and how much you actually need to spend each month. Let's say that you get that, that, that bonus, right? Or that salary increase of 10,000 or 5,000, but you've been living comfortably off of your current salary. Does it really make sense to increase your spending that extra five or $10,000? Or would it be smart to save that extra five or $10,000 and put it towards something more productive? Something that I've been doing for a very long time and I highly recommend is setting goals, specifically setting weekly goals, monthly goals, yearly goals, and then goals by like five years or 10 years, right? If you have a specific set amount of goals to do every single month, it lights a fire under your butt to do those things. Typically in my situation, I do a penalty. Should I not achieve all of these goals that I set for myself each month? And obviously as the months go on, you, you start to calibrate what you can actually do. Eventually it gets to the point where you have a set of monthly goals that are rational, that, does, that seem logical for you to do every single month. Furthermore, having yearly and let's say five-year goals, it, it, it shows you the future that you're working towards so that all of these monthly goals that you continue to do are building towards something, something good, something that you can see that you've written down. 
While having money in the bank is nice, another thing to consider doing is investing. Because with investing, instead of your money just sitting there and doing nothing, your money earns money, right? So things like a 401k or a Roth IRA or a, a normal uh, IRA or a life insurance policy, these things continue to earn you money every single year and you can use it eventually at some point to benefit you in the future. Another thing to consider is investing simulators. So if you're unsure of what to do and what to invest in and you're starting out, that's completely okay. There are some sites online that give you fake amount of money, a fake amount of time, and it tracks the normal stock market day by day. So it gives you a better understanding of, let's say you invested in X. It shows you how X is doing in the real time without you uh, spending a dime of your money. It protects you and it gives you a better education for eventually when you actually put your money into the stock market. To show you the power of investing, here are three separate cases of people investing in their Roth IRA at three different ages. Now you're allowed to invest $6,500 into your Roth IRA every single year. So here is the first case of someone investing at 20 and how much they have at 65, someone investing at 25 and how much they have at 65, and 30 and how much they have at 65. It just shows you how insane compound interest actually works and just goes to show you that the longer you invest the better you are another thing to do that is severely underrated is self-education so we're talking reading books uh listening to podcasts watching youtube videos uh, going to seminars talking to people on social media like dming them anything and everything you can do to be better than who you were yesterday is huge these people were in your exact same position x amount of years ago and they figured it out. Why not figure it out through them and not make the mistakes? It saves you time and energy and headaches. Imagine someone's entire life experience of investing in a book, 40, 50 years of investing, and he sells it for $20. You're telling me you're not gonna read that book for 50 years of knowledge just for $20? It makes no sense not to. Imagine having 50 years of experience of investing at 20 years old. The sky's the limit at that point. It saves you so much trouble and time. It is, it's perfect. Regardless of what you end up deciding to do or wherever you are on your journey, just remember that you are already at an advantage. By watching this video, you are taking your finances and specifically your future seriously and you're putting yourself on the right track to success. One quote that I think sums up this video nicely is by Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Now, I remember reading this book when I was young and I highly recommend it to anybody starting their investment journey. What he says is it's not how much money you make, but how much money you keep, how hard it works for you and how many generations you keep it for. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then click the video here. I'm sure you'll like it. Also, if you haven't, subscribe like the video and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.